so we're working on the lesson Derby Day, which is um, module two, page 119. And in the warm ups, it's asking you to solve for y. So I would really like you to use inverse operations to isolate the variable y um, and see what you get. So definitely pause the video and try that out on your own and then come back and check your answers. Um, pause it now because I'm about to show you the answers to that and there's really no point in doing it if you're not learning from it. So make sure you did that and these are the answers you should have gotten. Please let me know if um, you disagree with any of them because sometimes we know there are errors in our book. Alright, so um, our key terms for today are y-intercept and slope-intercept form and we're all familiar with those y-intercept is where the line crosses the y-axis, so it's the value of y when x is zero. And slope-intercept form is our uh, y equals mx plus b format. So um, you guys can read your learning goals, but the essential question for today is that we have learned how to calculate the slope of a line given a graph, a table, or the context how can you determine the initial value, aka y-intercept, in a linear relationship from a table, equation, or a graph? So we know that determining our y-intercept from looking at a graph is usually fairly easy if the y-intercept is represented there visually, but sometimes it isn't. So on the next page, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here, right away for the first one, we can see what the y-intercept is. We can see that where the line crosses the y-axis, focus here, is at 0, 4.5. So then that's our y-intercept. We can also see in 2 that where the line crosses the y-axis is at 0, negative, gosh, that's a little bit hard to tell. Um, negative 10. Sorry, I'm losing my mind. So was, each line was going by, going down by twos. And then, but this one is a little more difficult. We can't actually see where it is, but I know that if I extended this line, it would be somewhere, you know, probably clear up around here before it actually crossed the y-axis. Well, we can see if I try to extend it like this. Yeah. So... What I could do is find the slope using our y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and start creating my equation that would get me coordinates that I do know exist on the graph. So for example, we see that there are these two points. We have here 60 comma 40 and here 80 comma 15. So I used those and I did my y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 40 minus 15 is 25. And 60 minus 80 is negative 20. So this is negative 5 fourths or negative 1 and 1 fourth. Um, so then I could write the equation y equals negative 1.25 x plus something b. And then I can say, all right, well, if I plug in two of the coordinates that we have into this equation, what is that something that would make this a true math statement? So I know that I have here a y of 40 and an x of 60, so I could plug those in and say 40 is equal to negative 1.25 times 60 plus what? All right, so negative 1.25 times 60 um, is negative 75. So then what would I have to add to negative 75 to get to 40? 
Well, I definitely have to add 75 just to get to zero, and then another 40. So th that's, geez, sorry. 115. So then I would have to have a positive 115 here for my B in order for this to be a true math statement. So then that means my y-intercept is going to be 115. So to recap what I did here, I used these coordinates to find my slope. I plugged my slope into the equation. I then plugged in two coordinates that we know for sure are on the graph and for my x and my y. And then I solved the equation for what the b would have to be in order for this to be a true math statement. So then I could recheck my work and I could say is negative 1.25 times 60 plus 11540 and it is in fact true. And we have over here that our y-intercept is 0 comma 115. Okay, so um, what you could also have done is worked your way backwards once you found the slope. So you know that every time you're going down um, 1.25, you could work your way back from the closest point. But that would be a lot of work considering these are such large numbers. So I would like you guys to use what we just discussed here and this worked example on this page to complete 4.1. Um, that's all you have to do for today. Definitely make sure you submit your work to me and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Bye!